one of my favorite things about traveling um, via you know, airports or traveling at all is people watching. It's seeing this sort of the theatrical nature of, uh, of, of these you know, large rooms with loads of different types of people, different group sizes. And in, in a lot of these images that you're showing, we're looking at very um, empty um, terminal buildings. Or, um, and we're seeing these pictures of crowds as these really negative things. And I'm wondering, you know, with, this, with all this new design, are we actually going to completely lose that element of excitement, theatre, romance that comes from interacting with lots of different people? I was wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Do uh, I start, Tom? Sure. I would hope that we never lose that, because I, I agree, it's one of the most fun things to do. And when, when you think about it, the, the traveling public will still be there, no matter what we're looking at or which projects we're looking at. It's a matter of getting them to those points where they have time to sit down and people watch, where they're not stressed out about the process. It's not any fun to people watching a security checkpoint lane. You know, you, you, you see the same people going by as you circulate around. So. I think that you have to create the spaces that people engage in each one of the projects that we looked at. There are some beautiful spaces where people would sit and spend time and have that opportunity. So I think the answer is no, it won't go away. We just want to make sure they get there as easily as possible. I really liked your comment about the people watching and I think um, this is something that is very close to what, what we actually try to do and it's something what we learned from stations which are buildings that are more perceived as public spaces um, and airports are not so much and we really think that uh, that you should bring the, the quality of, of, of something that is as public and free as a station into an airport and try to work with architecture in a way that all these very harsh um, uh, factors that you have, of course, security, light, this very controlled uh, environment that you need there, mm. that is something that can more fall to the background mm. and really bring something out that is going more in the direction of social interaction with persons and who you're with or with other people. Thank you. I, I'd like to just add to that too. It's interesting to see how we went from the open environment where you, the family followed the passenger or the, the individual all the way down to the aircraft and waved at them as they got onto the aircraft. Where we're seeing some of the technology pushing with security, we might actually be able to push that back again, depending on how we look at the environment of securing the passengers as they come on in. We, uh, th there are some scenarios where we're creating that environment now that allows the, the family to go with because everyone will have to be secured as you come into the entrance hall and not the check-in hall. So hopefully we won't lose it as well. Okay, my time. I'm trying to keep calm this time. Uh, actually, in airport, we have to complete a progress, like first getting from the security gate and to the t till the departure area, we need to go check-ins, passport controls. So the other elements that you mentioned uh, are distracting our uh, psychology. And so I hope we won't, use, we won't lose that uh, elements in order to get to the point that we have to. Okay, thank you. The other thing I was thinking about was we've obviously talked a lot about passengers as users, but there are obviously a whole multitude of different people that are using these airports, you know, there's, there's retail, there's security, there's people that spend a lot of their lives in these spaces because they're work environments as well as travel environments. I'm wondering in each of your respective roles how you sort of take those different characters um, into account. Um, Frank, if you'd like to start. From a technology perspective, we are looking at the various demographics. We focused on the passenger today, but the operational technologies. As far as the, the airlines, I mean, there, there's a lot of demands today for them, too, because everything from the aircraft out is coming in. When, when we do all of our commercial activities on an aircraft and we're buying information, as that aircraft comes in, that information has to move from the aircraft into whatever environment. So there's the operational Wi-Fi that's pushed out to the gates. And creating a, a way that those same tools that we're allowing for a passenger to use 
are also the same tools that uh, the airport or the airport authority are offering to those who do business in an airport. So, so that the intranets and the, and the websites and the tools available for the passenger, there's an element there that's also available for the business. Because within the environment, some of the more successful Gatwick has really done a nice job of creating an environment that says we're all about making this airport work right. Mm -hmm. And we're all about ensuring that the passengers make it all the way through. So they're not only my passenger, they're your passenger. And creating that environment that allows that to happen. And, and we're seeing some good success with that. And to, to, to go along with that, in, in our practice, we look at, um, we've been tasked in, in, in many places to look at safety by design. So as we look at things, we look at the design of our buildings. We look at how they're maintained for the people that maintain them. We look at how the, the space that we're creating for a security checkpoint, how the daylight comes into there so their screens don't have glare on them. So we do look at all of those things. Each, each element is an integral part of what the process of design is for us. Combine that with, with the retail programs that we get involved with and local retail, local food and beverage, um, try to make the space, you know, you know, the sense of place that uh, we've talked about in, in some of the presentations. A lot of that's created by the, the retail components. So each one of those groups, you know, is an integral part in how you design and develop the overall plan of your space and then how you treat it and how you design it so that not just the passengers, but the people who run it and operate it are all part of that process and uh, are engaged. Mm. Thanks. Uh, here we talked all the time about the uh, retails and the other things that we are creating as, as architects, but I wanted to add that we are all just here um, creating the physical aspect of it. So it also needs a great service uh, to the passengers uh, and we, we, we know that it is combining with the service and the physical aspect together to create something excellent. I think. Um, I think all these infrastructural projects, they have a big service, servicing back of house part that, you, that you're not aware of and we, we really try to, to uh, take that also into consideration in, and it's part of this user flow diagram. It's just not something that, that we, we, we talk about in, in this, on, this, on this platform. Um, but I, I might repeat myself. If we, if, I think if we make a design that, that really captures the place and creates a unique identity, you, uh, you, you, people start to relate to it and they start to be proud of it. And this goes also for people that work there. And uh, it, it, it really enhances also their way of, of, of uh, operating the space every day. Mm. Um, speaking of uh, sort of uh, creating a unique sense of identity, I was wondering how you um, approach the arrival side of, um, of an airport, because obviously we talked a lot about you know, creating nice spaces to wait in when you're um, you know, waiting to go on to the plane, but there's, there's another sort of theatrical moment is when you arrive in a new country, you know, you're excited you're on holiday or you're going to see a new place, um, is, are there any specific examples that you'd like to share about work that you've put it really made a specific effort to make that arrival moment something special? It's probably more aimed at the architects. Uh, does it have to be about arrival? Or <laughs> I, I'm going to uh, give an example from my personal experience from yesterday morning. I'm sure most of you heard the uh, terrorism attack in our Atatürk Airport this uh, summer and yesterday during my flight it was my first time that I've been in this airport and it was like feeling unsecure and uneasy to be honest and uh, while I was walking that corridor I was like D don't know what will we happen in the next few seconds and then uh, I step into the lounge that I presented uh, my, in my presentation and there are a lot of things distracting me the TVs, the noises, uh, the restaurants and then I took the I, I, I spent my time there and then I took the flight and think that uh, okay the airports are the first and the last stop and uh, they have a great impact 
in our memory to shape uh, the good uh, the good feelings of the country. So, not the arrival, but the departing part. <laughs> I'm in that. Thank you. Um, I think there's, there's of course, this theatrical side that we want to cater to, so really en enhance this feeling of, of coming somewhere or going somewhere. It also has to do something with transparency, so that you know that you feel where you're coming from and where, where you're heading to. So it's an architecture or, or a design that has to be open somehow, and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, in that sense also quite respectful to you as a, as a person. So in, in, if you, if you go somewhere and, and you feel like you're treated as a piece of luggage, then you might not um, you know, relate to it and you might not really find it very pleasant. So it is also somehow to create an environment that's maybe more abstract, and, but that, that respects your needs that you have in a certain moment. When you come to an airport, your stress levels might be very high. So you might need to, uh, to look at an environment that, that balances that and, and helps you to, to sort of uh, stay focused or, or find your way and things like that. Yeah, thank you. And um, speaking of luggage, Tom, you talk, mentioned this um, potential future where luggage might be picked up from the from a hotel or something and taken, checked in straight away, therefore sort of removing some of the um, functions that the airport terminal currently has. Do you think this means that we might end up seeing smaller airport buildings at some point in the near future? Uh, hopefully, yes. And, and it, it ties somewhat to the question you asked just a moment ago. As the need for a ticketing and bag drop goes away, that whole function, I believe, will disappear in the not too distant future. Mm -hmm. And you do drop your bag somewhere remotely, whether it's a parking garage or a rental car return or at the train station, whichever one, so that when you show up, you really go right through, let, let's call it a new security checkpoint, mm -hmm. which whatever process that is. So I, I think that whole function will disappear. And I, I hope that whole function disappears. And I hope, as Frank said, that we'll have the ability to have, you know, your family join you to your gate and wave out the window like we used to, you know, 25 years ago to say goodbye and to meet you at the gate when you arrive because that flow for security checkpoint becomes a non-issue. So I, I do think it'll disappear, but I also think it's important as you think about it, everybody talks about the airport as a gateway. And most of the time we design airports where the best spaces are for the people leaving. Hmm. not for the people you're welcoming into your country. So we, we have looked at uh, changing that paradigm and moving the, the arrival sequence to the greater spaces up above where you claim your bags and you go through your processes and, and maybe min minimizing the, the check-in process and allowing it to happen out at the gates, like maybe in the central space at LA, yeah. where we've created the one central space for people to enjoy. Frank, do you have any thoughts on this idea of perhaps smaller airport buildings uh, in the near future? I do a little bit. Now, what you have to balance that with is, is the fact that we're growing 5% a year and that the, the numbers say that our airport, our aviation infrastructure will double somewhere between 10 and 20 years from now. So we are challenged with the fact of trying to create this environment that allows smaller airports because we're trying to divest the processes throughout. Uh, so I think, what, I think what we're going to see is more of a transformation of the facility than anything else. We have to be prepared to handle those kind of numbers in the future. At the same time, div divesting that process to where it becomes more of the, the meet and greet area. So I, I don't think we'll see in the near future the size of the airport reducing more than we will the processes that are happening within the airport. Okay, thank you. And I believe we are out of time. We don't have any uh, time for questions for everyone, but I'm sure you're gagging for coffee. So thanks very much. <laughs>